Well, Britt, can you give a hand over here? There's a piece of paper over there. It's called the Solmonad resource page. And you guys, a lot of people, or perhaps your friends, are asking for recommendations, books, lectures, movies, TV shows, documents, papers that are written. So I've put this together for you, for you guys. Please help yourselves to it. Please share it with your friends and your family because we do have answers. There are great resources, so many resources that are out there for each and every one of this. Please go over to the table, take one, take a few, and please share them with, with everybody. There's a list of, of podcasts, there's books, um, there's uh, certain shows on television, on film. Some people are asking, you know, how did this start? When did this start? Look at these resources and you'll have a, you'll have a greater understanding and share this with your friends. Um, we have a uh, support that is set up for all of these families again they're giving so much of themselves over and over day after day if you guys go to the solmonad resource page on facebook s-o-l-m-i-n-o-d resource page you will see gofundme pages you will see petitions that we ask you to sign there are recommendations of numbers that you can call your senator your congressman uh, local council members how to get involved resources just like this that, that you can take a look at and you can share with other people so uh, don't think that, that you're just out there by yourselves and you're not sure what to do we do have answers we have a lot of options available to each and every one of us and I know we all have loved ones who can't get out and, and do what we're doing you know, every day, but, but they're sitting at home and they can do a lot of work right there from the comfort of their home at their own computer. So please tap into these resources and encourage people to do that as well. I, we have another speaker that's going to be coming up here in just a moment. Um, Pastor Rose, if you can please come with me. Pastor Rose Larson from the Open Door Church has just been serving this community uh, from the inception there when George took his last breath and she and her team, um, Britt and Bree, where are you guys? And others from Open Bible, they're around here, uh, have, have been serving and, and giving and serving these families um, just uh, openly and, and generously. Uh, she's been working very closely with uh, our sister Delshia Perry. And so I've asked Pastor Rose to just share a few words and to go ahead and introduce Delshia Perry to you. So first of all, we have Pastor Rose Larson. Thank you, well, my friends, Christ's love compels us. Love compels us. And that is why I'm here. Because Jesus Christ's love in me compels me to stand with my sisters here today and my brothers not only here, but all around the world to stand and to say, every person from the beginning of creation was created in God's image and deserves to be treated that way. And we can all agree with it to that, right? Amen. And it's Christ's love that compels us to step out and to speak up and to lock arms and to be the answer to Jesus Christ's prayer himself in John 17 he prayed for complete unity and friends we are one body scripture speaks on that when one part of the body hurts the rest of the body hurts and so my friends it's time it's past time it's far past time for us to stand together even the prophets spoke to justice in the way that the sovereign power of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, would bring about justice and would bring the kingdom of God. Isaiah 61 talks about the spirit of the sovereign Lord. This is what the spirit of the sovereign Lord does, brings good news to the poor, binds, binds up broken hearts, sets the captives free, releases prisoners from darkness, proclaims the year of the Lord's favor and the vengeance of God upon injustice, comforts those who mourn, bestows a crown of beauty instead of ashes, oil of joy for mourning, garment of praise instead of despair, that they would be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And he would rebuild the ancient ruins. And Jesus Christ himself said this. This was one of the first, actually the first sermon he gave. And he said, it has been fulfilled today. 
And this same Jesus Christ stood and said, anyone who's thirsty, come to me, and streams of living water will flow from within them. That is his spirit. And so his spirit is that same love that compels us. That spirit, the picture I get, is those streams of living water flowing from within each one of us. And as we walk through the world, those streams of living water are flowing out over the sidewalks and over the neighborhoods, over cemeteries, over streets, over this nation. We need to be filled with his spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of us. When we come before him and surrender our life, he fills us to overflowing and does measurably more than we can ask or imagine. And it is that love that compels us. It is that love that a river makes its way through a mountain. No matter how big that mountain is, that water will get through and it will erode. And the more of us who stand together and are filled with the spirit and move through these mountains that appear like they could never move, that river of life will make a way. And it will bring beauty from ashes and joy from mourning. And I have learned more about this through my friendship and my sisterhood with my beautiful sister, Delshia Perry. I've learned more about the fierce love of God's heart, the fierce love of the spirit, and the strength of the Lord through the joy of the Lord through my beautiful sister, Delshia Perry. She is a strong testament. She is an oak of righteousness planted for the splendor of Jesus Christ. And as we have prayed together and wept together, the Lord showed me a picture of him collecting those tears in jars and sprinkling them out on the seeds of justice and of love that he is planting with us. And friends, we did to do that. We get to do that together. We are called on mission to step out and to lock arms together and to be the answer to our prayers. And so seek the Lord. Ask him where he is leading and guiding you. My beautiful sister, Delshia Perry, lost her son almost two years ago, September 2nd, in jail due to horrific maltreatment. They treated her son, who is my age, they treated her son worse than an animal in jail, and they neglected him. And because she is a praying woman, because she surrenders her life to God, because she was a pastor and an evangelist, she has surrendered herself and she has wept. And we have all prayed together that God would reveal hidden things. And he does. And he did. And he has. And he will. And he will bring more justice. It is at the federal level now. And it is going to keep on going until we get justice for Hardell, Cheryl. And for each one of these beloved families, yes. Know their stories. Fall in love with them weep, lament, grieve, let their stories change your hearts. Thank you. So this is Delshia Perry, my beautiful sister, evangelist, pastor, and dear friend and mother. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. First, I want to give thanks and praise and honor to God because he is the head of my life, amen? And then I want to thank my very dear friend, Sonia, who has been a huge blessing to not just me, but to all these mothers that are behind me that you have heard speaking. There will be another mother that will come up and speak as well, but she has been a huge blessing to me and to all of us because she has stepped out of that comfort zone that she talked about and stepped up and stepped up and took in our pain and said, you know what, I'm here for you and I'm gonna march with you and I'm gonna pray with you. And I'm gonna cry with you, and I'm gonna laugh with you. She has been a real sister and I thank God for you. I thank God for my pastor friend, of course, Pastor Rose and Open Door Church. Bree and Britt, they've just been amazing and have stood by my side since the death of my son. And as she told you what happened, I won't repeat it because it is very graphic. If you want to know more, my son's name is Hardell Sherrill. He died in the Beltrami County Jail, September 2nd of 2018. So his two year is coming up and this is very difficult for me. But I thank God Amen. that he woke me up this morning and started me on my way and he's given me another day. I wonder if my um, friend over here would, wouldn't mind just hitting that keyboard a minute because I just want to say a few things. Amen. <laughs> See, pain may come for the night, 
may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. See, the devil thought he was going to steal my joy. But see, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I got to march on. As, as hard as it is for me to continue to take another step, another day, to come out here and tell somebody about the somebody that can do something about the systemic issues of racism that we face in this country. My God, I got to come and tell it. And then you can go run tell that. He is a way maker, a miracle worker, is he not? Can y'all sing that with me today? Because that's who we are going to give praise and honor to on, to on today. Because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. He is a, yes. All right. <laughs> he is a <clears throat> way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, night of the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, sing it with us if you know it. Mm. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light of the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yes, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Who you are. Yes. Come on, one more time. Mm. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light of the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Let me just say, He is a promise keeper, He is a way maker, and He'll make a way where there seems to be no way because of who He is. That's who He is, and I got to give Him all honor. I got to give him all praise because he is due. My Lord Jesus. See, that's what gets me going. I don't know what gets y'all going. But see, when you love the God that I serve, my Lord Jesus, you can't help but fall in love and run tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. My God. <laughs> so I thank each and every one of you. Thank you so much, my brother. You know, uh, it's about setting the tone. I could be out here and I could be telling you how angry I am. I could be out here telling you how sad I am and how depressed I am and all of those things. And yes, that happened in the very beginning. But God moved me from that place. But God. But God. But God. And as you heard my sister Tashira say, as she came up here and spoke, she said, like my sister Del Shia say, he has the final say because he does. I don't care about what no judge is saying. I don't care about what the commissioner is saying. I don't even care about what the governor is saying. Because God has the final say. If God said it, that settles it. See, that's, that's whose word I'm going to stand on. Yes, Lord. Because when God is for you, who can be against you? So that's where I stand. And I just have to tell you that as we are coming up on his two year, And I knew she was having this event here. I've only been out here twice. This is my second time. Because as a mother, whose son also cried out to me when George Floyd's, when George Floyd called out to his mama, that broke my heart all over again. And I, and I, and I could just relate too well, oh too well. And so this is very difficult for me to be here today but I knew that I had to come and I prayed and I asked God to give me the strength. Yeah. So I won't be before you long because uh, it's been a long day, it's hot out, but I thank each and every one of you all for coming out and standing in solidarity with all of us mm. because it is very difficult to come out and share the story and grieve and fight and share the story and share the story and share the story and share the story. It re-traumatizes re us, see? 
I, I don't wish what has happened on me on anybody. Not even my worst enemy. I don't even know if I got any of them, but if I do, I wouldn't even wish it on them because it's that painful. There were several months I couldn't even sleep on my back because my baby died on his back. So every time I closed my eyes and I went to fall asleep, the enemy here, he come rearing his ugly head. And I had to wake up and rebuke him and tell him, you're not going to disturb me in my sleep. Uh-uh, not, not today. Oh, no, not today. Because I got to get some rest because I got to get up and fight. Now, the devil knows who I am, so he didn't back that thing on up, see. Ain't nobody got time for that. See, you got to walk in that authority God and gave you, if you know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all out here know what I'm talking about. So that's the authority I walk in, and that's the authority I take every day. Every day. But I just wanted to take a moment to share with you all a poem that my son came to me in a dream and said to me four months after his death. And this is what has kept me going because at the time that my son died, I was in the church doing what I love to do. That's preaching the gospel. Yes. On that Sunday, I was in the church coming forth with a word about what does the love of Jesus Christ mean to you? That was my sermon on that day. Yeah. And I started out with John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I know I couldn't sign up for that. Not knowing that that's what was taking place on that very day. He had taken my only begotten son because my son was my only child. So I was angry with God. How many of us out here know what I'm talking about? About being angry with God. So angry with God that when he started talking, you just be like, look, look, I ain't even got time today. Because I done came to you and we done had some conversation. And you didn't hear me. You didn't answer me. So I'm not trying to hear what you got to say. Not today. But see, he said he will never leave nor forsake us. So even though I had walked in walked away from him because I was so mad. He, he said, oh, daughter. He wrapped his arms around me. And he said, no, daughter. He said, I'm here. I've always been here and I'll always be here. And he told me after we went back and forth and back and forth. He said, daughter, I had to take your son. Because his life, his death would bring about life in a way that you can't even understand. And while we don't understand everything that God does, we know that his will is the best. Yes. And so he said his life was not taken in vain. You may not understand and see it all right now revealed, but I will reveal it to you. You just need to trust the process. So, so this poem, after of course I Ask God to forgive me and I repented because that's what we do. I had to come to myself and say, okay, Lord Jesus. After some while now, after a little time had passed, I had to repent and ask God to forgive me because I, I was forsaking him. But he said he would never leave nor forsake us. And he hasn't. But this poem, my son came to me and he said, Ma, I got something I want to tell you. And I had my phone out because I was scrambling for a piece of paper and pencil to write it down. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I couldn't find it. He said, Ma, just write, just talk it in your phone. Don't try to write it down. Just talk it in your phone, Ma. So I did. And this is what my son said. Mama, see, I've been set free. I see the hole that's in your heart. Trust and believe. God is mending that hole and healing that spot because it's God's amazing work of art. I know there were many times that you stayed awake at night praying for me to see the light and go in the right direction. But see, Mama, all those prayers you prayed provided me with many years of protection. Because I should have been dead long, long ago when the devil tried to take me, but God stepped in and said no. So I thank the good Lord I had a praying Mama, one who never gave up on me. But trust and believe through your prayers, Mama, I've been set free. I know it's hard to believe I'm gone. Thinking back on when I was really, really young, 
God blessed us with a lot of good memories, just you and me. But you got to hold on knowing that I've been set free. God knew my time was coming near, but during my last few days of life, I had no fear. Because he was there with me, lending an ear and holding me dear. So please, mama, please, don't you shed another tear. Now you go do what the Lord wants you to do, because God's got me and he's got you too. I ask that you ease your mind and let him take you places you never thought you'd see. So please, mama, please, don't worry about me. I'm free from all hurt and all pain. Your prayers were never in vain because the Lord came and got me and set me free. Now you go be who he created you to be so that other sons, mamas would be set free. See, that's the purpose and the plan. But you don't know that right off the bat. And in my pain, he is using my pain in purpose. So if what I say can bring healing to another mother, to another mother, Miss Marilyn's going to come up and tell you what happened to her son. Some of us didn't lose sons. Some of us lost husbands and fiancés. The pain is real. The struggle is real. The reality is real. But we've got to come together and help one another. That's what I love about what Tashir is doing. It's all about families supporting families against police violence. That's what Tashir Garraway's uh, organization is about. So when she first reached out to me, I was so depressed and so down, I, I, I couldn't even barely get out of bed, let alone go into some function to talk to another person about their pain. I, I'm like, I'm dealing with my own pain. How am I going to help you with yours? And I can't even deal with my own. That was the reality. But she kept on tugging and she kept on tugging. And I thank God for you, Tashira. I thank God for what you do. And for everybody out here that, you know, has an organization and is doing things to help bring awareness to what is real. Racism in Minnesota is real. And we have to face that elephant in the room once and for all. It's not about a de democratic race. It's not about a Republican race. It's about the human race. Did y'all hear me? And that's what I told the state legislators when I met with them last week. I told them the same. I told them the very same thing. I said, but you know what the thing about it is while we are talking about politics? Because I used to love to talk about politics. And I've gotten to the point where I don't even like talking about politics because somebody want to knock your head off and, and slam you down and talk about you like a dog if you say the wrong thing. Come on now. We got to keep the main focus, the main focus. And people are dying. People of color are dying. Minorities are dying. And there is a problem with that. And we've got to come together collectively as one. It's called unity. You and I makes unity. Come on, somebody. You and I. We can't have unity without you and I. So we got to come together and make this thing happen. But I'm going to keep on praying. See, I got to fight from a place of peace. That's my prayer closet. I spend a lot of time on these knees. And I'm going to stay on these knees till we all get justice. Because you know what? <laughs> if my son don't get justice, there will be no peace. If they don't get no justice, there will be no peace. But let me just say this, in O Jesus, in O peace. No Jesus, no peace. In O Jesus, in O peace. But check this out, K-N-O-W Jesus, K-N-O-W peace. Come on somebody, no justice, no peace. Come on mothers, no justice, no peace. That's what I'm talking about. No Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. Thank you very much for coming out and supporting us. We thank you. We love you. God bless you all. Peace of God be with you.